the line. There's money to be made, glory to be had, and a belt to win. And this is going to be a great first matchup that we got with the two youngins, Spoto and Drini. Absolutely. You start with the man from Staten Island. I call him a man. He's only 16 years old. But he's got himself in a good position here in the wild card stage. Yeah, Michael Spoto, the youngest competitor we've had here at a live event, really making a name for himself. And not only is his tournament life on the line, his MCS season life is on the line for because in order for him to make that ultimate league, he needs to make the championship of this tournament here today. And he's very aware of that. And the ultimate goal for him is to make that ultimate league. It's a man on a mission right there. Right. The top two here in the challenge will make it to the ultimate league. That starts in February. Rondé Barber, Jalen Ramsey, Keenan Allen. Of course, you see A.J. Bouye, who made a lot of big plays this week. And Jared Goff makes out his fave five. Yeah, and I love how he has that Saxonville secondary out there. Ramsey, Ramsey and Bouye, those are two solid cornerbacks. Not bad on the rest of the team either. The problem here, Coltrane, is Drini likes to run the ball, and he only has that one middle linebacker he drafted in Dion Buchanan. So that may be a factor later on in this game. Does have the Buccaneers playbook, so... He's locked in as far as the coaching goes, but he's heavily drafted on the offensive side of the ball. On the other side, you have Drini. We called him young Drini. Now he's Drini. He's matured. He's now into the wild card stage. 18 years old from D.C. And he's coming out with the bandana. Bandana Drini taking form here today in this matchup. It looks like he's trying to make a run. The last event he won, he was bandanaed up. Glad to see him bandanded up today. And this is a young man who many have considered to be a top Madden player dating back to last year. This is his first season that he's been able to compete. And here he is at a live event right away. And we'll see him at the Denver Broncos Club champ Championship event later on as well. This kid's the real deal. Let's take a look at his fave five. These are the guys he's going to be leaning on throughout this wild card matchup. He's got Eric Allen, Shady McCoy, Casey Hayward. Antonio Brown's going to be making it twerk out there. And then Kurt Cousin, the mud hero. Yeah, and that Shady McCoy is nasty. Got good jukes, good spins. Get him in the open field. Drini's team is pretty well balanced, as you can see there. He's got some good linebackers. And Shazier and David. He got Clowney, Garrett Ansa. And that offense, Keenan Allen and Amari Cooper, that are a real deal. He'd be rocking the Eagles playbook in this. Now time for my favorite part. I say it every time. RG, what's your scouting report in this one? Well, I got to talk to these guys. And for Drini, he said, I need to stop the bunch and manage the clock. Spoto has the number two passing offense in this tournament. Drini has the number one pass defense. He needs to not let Spoto air the ball all over the place and then manage the clock to keep him off the field. For Spoto, he knows he needs to stop the run. He only has that one linebacker. Drini loves to run the ball. And then he knows he can get the ball into the red zone. But when he gets it there, he needs to be able to put up touchdowns and not take field goals. So he wants to score in the red zone. These guys made some questionable reads moving through the group stage. So I'm expecting to see some fireworks. I'm expecting to see some turnovers. And here we go. The single elimination part of the challenge starts right now. Spoto getting to kick the ball off. And for Madden players, much like Bill Belichick seems to be doing, it's been a more trend you're seeing in the NFL. They love to kick the ball off first, getting the ball at halftime. You always feel much comfortable in that situation as a Madden player. So I'm sure Spoto happy he's in this situation to start such a big game. Well, the good players work the clock where they're able to double dip the chip, where you can get a score right before the half and come out and halftime score again. Of course, in the real life, Patriots do that oh so well. And Shady piles ahead for two. Yeah, we're going to get to see early on if Spoto's got his run defense ready. Both of these guys, they know how to prepare. They know what each other wanted to do. They were up last night getting ready for this game. Second and eight, opening drive. Wild card stage winner will play Prodigy, who went 3-0 and in Group A. Spoto here, Coltrane, in a 4-3 wide nine. He usually likes to run a dollar defense, but seeing as Drini, he knows he wants to run the ball, came out in a little 4-3 right there. Got Drini in a third and nine. Ball at the 25. Needs to get to the 39 and move the chains. 
Play action, has time, he's gonna use his feet. And Cousins will slide down at the 36. That's a first down, Drini. Yeah, good play by Drini. And being able to scramble with your quarterback, protect them and get yards is something you're gonna see from these high-level Madden players. Trying to keep him honest with the run. But Shady McCoy has carried it three times and loses a yard there. When you get the, the camera of Spoto and he's on defense and he's making adjustments, watch how fast his hands are moving, Coltrane. He makes the most pre-play adjustments on defense out of all our competitors. You can even hear his clicks. But he adjusts a lot at that line of scrimmage. And you see that spinner man defense. But there's a ton of adjustments going on, especially on the back end of that secondary. Yeah, this cover three right there, fire press. He'll mix that defense up with manual adjustments. Look at that. Look how fast he's moving right there. Every one of those is an adjustment. Each one of those clicks. And that's him getting keen to what Dreedy really wants to do and looking to take it away. Shady makes a juke. Picks up the first down at the 48. And that's what we've seen from Dreedy so far in the Madden Challenge. He will take what the defense gives him. Oh, uh, yeah, these guys are phenomenal at that. They're not one play touchdown maestros like that. They're going to take what you give them, and that's why they're so successful. Dreedy's got room. You saw the line get pancaked. Got all that, those Grizzlies up front. And if you get in a pass defense, if you pass commit, sometimes your guys get leaned in the wrong way and a big gain on the ground, second and one. The thing that's frustrated for Trini in that situation is he had a whole bunch of room in front of him and he stumbled. And, you know, you want to make the best out of those situations. Sure, you'll take the 10-yard gain, but with a little bit better stick work or, you know, one, you know, less, less collision, that's a crib shot. But nonetheless, he'll take it and keep on fighting. Needs an inch here on third down. And he'll just use Cousins as a battering ram to move the chains. First and 10 now from the 41. Promising opening drive for Drini. Yeah, looking good so far. Got Spoto got him in a third and long. Drini scrambled with the quarterback. Continuing to just stay conservative. Mix it up a little bit. Goes back to the run. Picks up a few. It's going to be second and seven at the 38 now. Already about three minutes gone by here in the first. Those five-minute quarters, you blink, and it's gone. Yeah, you have to maximize your possessions. Batting games are over in a blink of an eye. Each play counts. Everything's important. And Antonio Brown can't haul it in. Good coverage downfield. That's going to bring up another third down. And he's out of field goal range. And Spoto, his Achilles heel yesterday is he couldn't get, he went one and two in his group, and he couldn't get off the field in third and long, and he was pissed about that. Let's see if he can correct that today. Cousins. Good defense. Good coverage, and now you'll see a chance at fourth and seven here. We talked about the limited possessions. You might only touch the football five or six times a game, you got to go for it on fourth down. Yeah, in a five-minute quarter game, you have to be more aggressive. There's not as much time to set things up, wear the defense down. This is a big play. Spoto has not been able to get off the field in these situations. This could be a momentum changer for him. Bunch to the left, little motion. Cousins. That's time, only a three-man rush. What a block. And he throws it into coverage, and it's picked off. He's got room. And Barber. He's got room. Trying to get to the edge. Forks down a bounce by Amari Cooper. And the youngsters loving it. Look <laughs> at Spoto. What isn't there to love? You can't get off the field yesterday. Well, how about today when the stakes are high? Oh. Get it done. Ramsey with the pick tries to get yeah, to Ramsey. the numbers. And Spoto's loving it. He's got three number 20s on his team. Ramsey, Barber, and Buchanan. That happened to be Jalen Ramsey. I mean, he's 16 years old. He's already guaranteed himself $20,000 in this tournament. He wins this game, he guarantees himself $25,000, and then he's one game away from that ultimate league. He's locked in right now. See if Drini can respond, though. Drini's known for keeping his composure. We saw him not panic in some trifle situations yesterday. See how he does. Completion to Landry. That's going to bring up a third and six at the 34. 
65 seconds to go in the first quarter. And we're going to have a timeout by Draney. Two remaining for both these players. We got three. We got three, fellas. We got three. Bill O'Brien on the no, that was, was that Peter, Peterson? That was uh, Doug Peterson, right? Yeah, Peterson. Looked a little bit like Papa Spoto <laughs> on the sideline. Yeah, he's been hanging out with us all week. Watching his son advance through the challenge. He's going to take off the call. Oh, he takes a hit. Oh, my goodness. And it's scooped at the 38. I told you from the start, there's going to be some turnovers in this game. Drini's got it back. Look at the stick work of Dreen. He goes up, fakes like he's going with the playmaker, commits to the scramble, use a hit stick. The AI's there to recover. That's how you make plays. Wow. That's a big play, and that was all Drini. Use a defender, making it happen. First and ten now. Stretches it to McCoy. He cuts it back. Let's go. Gets free, oh, and Shady man. will take it into the end zone, and Drini strikes first. Oh, I'll tell you where the stick works at right now, Coltrane. It's in young Drini's thumbs. A user hit stick that hands the ball off, hits the hole, crispy juke to get to the outside. Wow, what a way to respond after Spoto forces the turnover on you. Touchdown after the fumble. You see that move right there. That's what broke him free. And McCoy puts Drini on top. With a pooch kick. That was a different version of the pooch kick. He actually kicked it. To the returner, usually <laughs> when you see that, they kick it to the second level to the fullback. Yeah, yeah, fullback tied in this time. They bring it out to the 29. That's Spoto. This is his gun bunch. He likes this side of the formation. You're going to see a lot of crossing routes, some corner routes out of this formation. A post route over the middle, that halfback base. And I'll be honest, I thought Spoto got away with some bad reads earlier in the week. Yeah, well, he almost didn't make it here. Remember, yeah. both of these guys went one and two in their group. They're playing with house money right now. But, hey, who's complaining, right? Yeah, Matt's oh, oh, Hollywood. Oh, oh, oh. That's what I'm telling you. Own a, own a little bit of borrowed time this week. Yeah, these were tight groups. A couple oh, of things oh, go different. They might not be there. Trini almost had a pick six. That's Levante David. Who had it in his mitts. Oh, good pocket. Go, go, got to get rid of it. That's the trouble. You're scrambling to your left. You got to turn back right to let it go. And Clowney wraps him up for the sack. Yeah, Spoto extended the play right there. Showed some good pocket, but then got greedy. Looked like he went to set the pass. I would have liked to see him just throw the ball away once he escaped the pressure the first time. And that's Look the end of the first quarter here in the wild card stage of the Madden Challenge. And Take a picture, folks. You're about to see a punt. Yeah, look at that young buck trying to control his Madden rage. 16 years old, playing under this kind of pressure. And Hayward will fair catch it at the 29, and Drini will have the ball and the lead. This is going to be interesting right here. It's, and now, in this situation, if you're Drini, though he likes to run the ball, um, you're up seven. You, you can get a little more aggressive in this situation. This is a good time after you force a turnover when you're up. Maybe you want to take a little shot play, try to get yourself in field goal range. Shady made one man miss, but Buchanan is able to come up there and clean it up. We talked about the lack of firepower on the defensive side of the ball for Spoto. Yeah, he only has, out of, the, oh, out of these two players right there, only one of them's a goon. The, there's a sack goal. as Aaron Donald bullies his way in there. And it's going to be third and 14. There you go. Now, Spoto might be weak on the linebacker core. He might only have the one goon in Deion Buchanan. But these goons right here on the front three-man rush, now that's real beef. Those guys will generate some pressure. You know, that PA shot play, although it can be effective, takes a long time to set up. Good pass. Good find, Antonio Brown. And that'll earn him a new set of downs. Yeah, Spoto with Fletcher Cox, Aaron Donald, Leonard Williams. These are Grizzlies that he's got up That's in the That's a Pro Bowl line. Line. is what that is. Yeah, exactly. Goes back to Let's McCoy. Go. He's oh. got a big lane. Let's go, And man. Shady will score for the second time today. 
Drini, don't call me young, up 14 and nothing. We talked about with Sean McCoy. As we see how prolific Kip is passing the ball, you don't see him make a bad read. It's impressive watching Drini just hit these holes perfectly. Good stick know, work with Sean McCoy. Big runs. Spoto's got to be feeling the pressure right now. He's got himself in a tough situation down 14 nothing to a top player like dream i'll give you a little john mad moment you got to give props to number 61 cole toner Cole's the right guard on that pull free shady mccoy up for the long run there you go. look at that offense right now spoto with one yard look at those rushing yards yes Negative 432 for Trini. And I can expect, that means Sport only has one yard of total offense here. He's going to have to get something going. Get himself some momentum. There's a Chris Thompson who's been huge this week. That's that Madden Harvest version. But he gets gobbled up for five. For Sporta, you'll take the five, but being down 14 nothing, you know, it's easy to get in that mode where you, you want to get it all back in one play, but you can't do that. Got to stick to the game plan, but game plan not working too well so far. Check, check. Fresno, Fresno, Fresno. So on, on this third and three right here, Coltrane, I don't know if Spoto's in four down territory, too. I believe he would be. I mean, he could run the ball. You look for him to slag it, I guess. It's a big play for him. If you don't get this, Drini's in field goal range, got him, making you go for it on fourth down. Goff. Oh. Could not get time in the pocket, and Ryan Shazier able to bust through. And this is awkward. Here it is, Coltrane. Spoto's got himself in a big fourth and 11. If he doesn't get this, Drini's in field goal range, which will allow him to milk the clock, make it three possessions. Big play. Fourth and 11. And he gets hit from behind. It's going to be a turnover on downs. You can't hold it that long on fourth and 11. Coltrane, you've got to try to make it rip. Everything kind of blanketed, though. Drini is just playing lights out right now. Spoto's back against the And I tell you one thing, RG, you get caught up, single elimination, you're in the Madden Challenge, you forget things like the fake hike. That's back-to-back -back aggressive pass rushes that Drini got away with in his coaching adjustments. It's a phenomenal point right there, full train. The ball at the 22, he's got a 14-point lead. He's trying to put this one in the refrigerator. Yeah, and you got to think, Drini's going to be on that conservative ball carrier coach adjustment right now as he takes it to the two-minute warning. And what those coaching adjustments do, for those that don't know that are new to the game, Coltrane, when they're selecting their plays, they can also go to a menu in that play call screen that's called coaching adjustments. And from there, you can do things like tell your pass rush to be aggressive, which will allow them to get a better pass rush, but if you fake snap, they're more likely to go off sides. Or you tell your ball carrier to be conservative, where he won't fumble as much, but he's not going to fake anyone out. And these players are very schematic with the way they use those coaching adjustments. But like you said, Spoto not trying to counter the aggressive. The look on both of like our competitors' faces, you know this might be the moment of the game that's going to make them or break them. Yeah, if you're Trini, you've got to be feeling good right now. Up 14, you're milking the clock. In field goal range. But one thing we should call out is Spoto considers himself a block kick specialist. And uh, we've already seen him block two kicks here. Yeah. And he had some other opportunities with some animations. Yes. If you're just joining us, we'd like to welcome you in here on a Thursday to the Madden Challenge. We're out in Los Angeles, and you're watching the wild card stage. Drini versus Spoto. The winner will play Prodigy in the semifinals. So you got to watch these goons right here. He might come flying off of that edge try to block this kick. We've seen him do it a couple times. And the kick is up and it is good and the lead is 17. And I'm not good at math, but that makes it three possessions. Yeah, and no timeouts over here for Spoto. Only 53 seconds. He needs to be care he needs to go and try to get some points, but you also need to be careful not to turn the ball over and let Drini get even more points. This is going to be a tough situation right here oh, for Spoto. God. Spoto had some kick returns in the group stage, took one back for a touchdown, took a block kick back for two points on an extra point. So his special teams has been phenomenal here at the Madden Challenge, but his offense at times is 
been fleeting. Yeah, and this is where it needs to get it going. The offense has been struggling, but if you can get yourself some momentum before going into that second half, it'll be huge. This game's not over. Golf has read. time. Good Goes read. into the boundary. And right on point, picks up the first down and more importantly gets out of bounds with 44 seconds to go in the half. Yeah, that was a perfect play. Picked up a chunk of yardage, got out of bounds, stopped the clock. Three is huge here, even if you could get three. And it's a committee meeting at the cornerback. Bag him up, it's a sack. Yeah, it looked like Spoto trying to set up a shot play, kept a bunch of people in the block, but Drini set the house, manually rushed. No time for Spoto. Drini with his fourth sack of the game. Second 17 now. Clock on the move. Golf. Got to try to get out of bounds. Got a block. Looked like he could have got out there. It was close. Yeah, he had Panicked. it. He, he had pan He's trying to be safe, you know, trying to prevent that turnover. It's ticking. He's got himself. He's got to make something happen. That's a good play. Oh, only got one foot in bounds. That would have put him in field goal range. And now you got one play. It's fourth and nine. You got to go to the end zone. Oh, that was a good play by Spoto. Keenan can't get the foot down. That's huge. Trini with a sigh of relief. Knows how big that was. Puts it down low. There's Juice. Landry can't get there. That's how the half will end, 17 to nothing here in the Madden Challenge. We're in the wild card round, and Trini looking good. I was worried. He put the headband on. He was on a winning streak without the headband, but he needed a different look here for single elimination. Now when Bandana Trini shows up, <laughs> Bandana Trini shows up to play. I've seen it before. And he's looking phenomenal so far in this game. I am impressed, yep. though, that young Michael Spoto, he, he hasn't lashed out. Or, you know, it's hard for yep. these young ones when things aren't going their way to keep their cool. But he does stay focused at the task at hand. And he's going to have his hands full in the second half. But it doesn't look like he's given up. So I, I can't wait to see it. Well, guys, turnovers have played a big part so far. Let's go to Dave and the gang. Thank you, guys. 17 nothing, all Drini in the first half. Rico, you predicted this. You didn't think it was going to be that close. It hasn't been so far. If you're sitting in Spoto's shoes right now, what can you do to get yourself back into this ballgame? You got to do handle it one possession at a time. You got to get stops on defense, and you got to put points on the board. Take what the defense is giving you. If you have the underneath, take it. Don't look to get it all back in one play. One half, you see he was able to put up 17 on you, so you see it can be done. To me, it's really the pressure from Drini that's yeah. causing the headaches for Spoto. Doesn't have time in the pocket. Doesn't have the offense that he feels like he can go to. Drini's really packing the box. You saw him get some turnovers early. It's just got to find a way to switch it up a little bit. I mean, if, if you go back and really look at this play right here, Drini was a good user, gets the fumble, and right on the sideline scoops it. You know, it changes the momentum of that game. His ability to run the ball here, LaShawn McCoy has been huge for him this entire challenge. That's how he's done it. Defense, special teams, neither guy really opening it up too well. But in the second half, they're going to have to because it's going to get limited possessions. That could make this gap even bigger. But if you're Spoto, you're here. There's nothing else you can do except open it up and really just try and go for it. Yeah, and find a way to contain that pressure that you were talking about that Drenny's coming on with coming with. Well, we are working our way through the playoffs of this Madden Challenge. We will be back tomorrow night bringing you the final of the Madden Challenge starting at 8.30 p.m. Eastern with the Mixer pregame show. And at 9 p.m. Eastern, we will be bringing you that finals on Facebook, Twitch, Mixer, Twitter, and YouTube. And don't forget to tune in to the CW's EA Madden NFL 18 Challenge special airing Wednesday, December 27th at 8 p.m. 7 p.m. Central will give you an emotional competitive journey as these eight stars chase the dream of becoming Madden Challenge champion. Remember, watch that on the CW Wednesday, December 27th at 8, 7 Central. Now, we have seen Zach Farley do a lot of stuff over the course of this week. He's done some color commentary. He's been up at the desk with us. He's also a teacher of the game of Madden. Let's hop into a Madden tip with Zach Farley. What's up, gamers? Zfaro's back again to teach you how to play like a pro in Madden 18. Today, Hollywood steps in to teach you how to have great command at the line of scrimmage. You can see he's got a pass play call, but he doesn't like it, so he presses X and then flicks down on the right stick to get to a run play, which is much better against this defensive front. He takes it all the way across for a first down. 
In this play, we'll show you a couple other adjustments you can make before the snap. You can see Hollywood has a pass play called here, but he doesn't like it. He's got Richardson on an in route, so instead he presses the Y button to hot route, B for Richardson, and then flicks the right stick to the left. That puts Richardson on a slant route across the middle. One other thing you can do is motion your receiver. Hold down B to get the blue icon underneath, send him to the left side of the field by holding the left stick, and boom, all of a sudden a play that wasn't gonna work gets wide open for a huge game. By mastering your pre-play adjustments, you too can compete in the Madden Championship Series. All right, nicely done, Zach. Looking good. I tell you what, Drini put a tip up there. You'll give these guys the address, but it's a cover two beater. It's a play you absolutely want to run. So head on over to where Dave tells you to go for a great cover two beater. I'm going to start using it myself on the old uh, leaderboards. That's a nice little segue right there, because if you're looking to improve your game, you should definitely head over to youtube.com slash EA Sports to get all the tips and tricks from the Madden pros. Well, right now, Adrian Lawrence is down on the sideline with a Madden pro. Adrian. Yes, I'm here with Drini, who's leading 17 nothing in the first half. What has made you so dominant? Uh, he couldn't move the ball. I think he went three and out two straight times and giving my offense, you know, a chance to like keep increasing the lead. And um, my run game is also like very important right now. Lashawn McCoy, he's he's killing right now. And hopefully, I'm not gonna stop applying pressure. I'm gonna play the same way I played in the first half. And hopefully, I come out with a W. And in terms of the rest of the tournament moving forward in this next half, what is your mentality? Uh, defense and run game. That's all I need. If if I can get stops, I feel confident versus anyone. Uh, my loss versus Kiv and Hollywood, they actually start, scored a lot of points, which put me in a bad spot. And if I, you know, reduce the amount of points they score, I think I might win this. Well, best of luck in the next half. Back to you, Scott. Cole. All right, thanks so much. Scott Cole RG here back in the booth for the second half. Dreamy with a big lead, and it, I told you it was going to come down to turnovers. And Drini's got the best in, of, uh, you know, Spoto here in the first half. Spoto just needs to lock down. He's got to get some turnovers himself because Drini has proved in the, in the group stages he can turn the ball over himself. So you got to just replicate what Drini did in the first half in the second half for Spoto. Yeah, and Spoto showed us good things on the opening drive. He stopped Drini, got him in a fourth down situation, forced an interception, and then Drini laid that incredible user hit stick, forced the fumble, made a huge play, and, and, and Spoto hasn't sniffed momentum since. He, he needs to get himself back into this game, stay focused at the task at hand, and not try to get it all back in one play, but still have a sense of urgency to the situation. Took the kickoff out to the 18, and that's where Spoto will start. First and 10, trailing by three possessions. See Spoto ID in the mic right there. There, there's already the adjustment. You know, you, you notice you're taking a lot of sacks. You're getting a lot of pressure in the first half. Fake hike a few times, and that coach, coaching's adjustments will come back to bite you. Yeah, that's what you were talking about. Drini on that aggressive pass rush. Sporto fakes, hikes with that RB button. One of the DNs jumps free five yards. Got yourself in a crispy first and five. Nice find out to the 38. The blitz was looping in, but golf. With a nice dot. First attempt. There you go, Sporto. And getting the ball to start, you know, we talked about it. He kicked off first. He got the ball to start the second half. Get a chance to get some momentum. Got to take advantage. The young Spoto. The run just. If he's going to do this, though, I think it's going to be through the air, Coltrane. He's the number two passer in this tournament. Still trying to make the play in action effective. Second and 12. Got time, got space. And along the boundary once again. Now it's at the 43. He's in plus territory. The poise rolls out with Goff. Baldwin's got a step. Presses the A button for that possession catch. Gives you some toe drag swag. Ingram almost turned it upfield. Steps out of bounds at the 38. You got a second and five. He's got to score early and often here in the second half. Yes, Spoto looking good so far on this drive. Good pace. Good reads. Well, he almost looked like he could have tested the user downfield. If that was a streak, that was a touchdown. But it was a little dig by the tight end. Yeah, it results in an incomplete pass. Big third and five here for the young one. 
Goff. Good pocket. Going to take off. He slides down at the 30-yard line. First and 10. It's looking good. Looking good. Sport already in field goal range. Could at the very worst-case scenario, as long as he don't turn it over or take a sack, make this two possessions. Young man showing some poise so far to open up the second half, Coltrane. Ball to 30. Golf. Once again, he's sacked the fifth time of the game. And we just said it, no turnover, no sack. Miles Garrett, the former Texas A&M Aggie. you got to get the ball. That's a five-man rush. Not going to have much time. Now he's only got a three-man rush. Second and 19. He brings his user up. Golf takes oh, off. There's yeah. a fumble, and it's Golf. scooped up. One man to beat. Can he beat Thompson to the end zone? No. Oh, my goodness. That is devastating. Bradley Roby with the scoop. Oh, let's go. Yeah. That is devastating Golf. for Spoto. Good drive going. Scrambling with the quarterback. Doesn't protect him. Oh, my God. Allen can't hold on. They're at the five-yard line, second and ten. Drini's already got a touchdown off a turnover today. Drini representing that top Madden crew. TopMadden.com where they share all their tips and tricks and their e-books. Bunch of the best players in the country. And uh, four of the eight competitors here in the Madden Challenge are a part of that top Madden crew led by mm. the greatest Madden player of all time. Eric Problem, right? First and 10 at the 14. McCoy takes it to the five. How big has Shady McCoy been? 15 carries for 140 yards. If almost with, he's almost averaging 10 yards a pop on each carry. When I, when I was a young buck and I used to play franchise mode, that was my goal. I, I'd be playing on rookie. I want my running back to average 10 yards a carry. I want a first down every carry, try to make the pro ball, break all the records. This is a tournament game, and Drini's out here putting up that the numbers. So third and four from the seven. Already leading by 17. Touchdown here, it's still technically a three possession game. McCoy stretches it outside, spins inside. Touchdown, Drini. Third touchdown of the game for Shady McCoy. Drini's putting on a clinic right now. Perfect kick, just clicking on all cylinders, showing why all the hype was real. Outside run, steerable move, whoopsie. Do those steerable moves, you hold the left trigger, the right trigger, aim the left stick, what direction you want to go, press the B button, get nasty with the spin. Landry takes it to the 31 for Shady McCoy. Oh my goodness, look at those numbers. Nine brushes for 159 yards, three scores. It's all been Shady McCoy. Of course, former Pitt Panther. Uh, let, me, let me give you a list, RG, of some of the guys that played at Pittsburgh. Tony Dorsett, Larry Fitzgerald, Mike Dicka, Dan Marino, just to name a few. And, of course, Aaron Donald, another big Matt, Matt and Goon. I wish they still had that Stump the Schwab show. We have to get <laughs> you out there. I like you against the Schwabs, Cole. Ball in the 28, third and 13. Trini Joker just swagging. Spoto, you got your hat. You, you, you got to feel bad for him, too. I mean, first of all, it, it sounds weird. You're feeling bad for a 16 year old that, you know, just first made tournament. First tournament. <laughs> yeah. Going to probably walk away. He's going to walk away with at least $20,000. But he's put in a lot of hard work to get here. It's not all sunshine and rainbows to make an event like this, Paul Train. Spoto's committed himself to this. He's played a ton of games, put himself under a lot of stress, pressure situations. And it looks like it's all coming to an end, you know, right here in this game versus Drini. But he's going to learn a lot of lessons to this. I think the biggest lesson he learned is he accomplished a goal to make, he set a goal to make one of these live events. He, comp he accomplished it. He put it in the work to accomplish it. And now he called a shot. He called a shot. He, he, he told me he was going to be here. 
but now he can use that formula anywhere in life. If he puts in the hard work to whatever he wants to do, he'll be able to accomplish it. It might not happen right away, but... It's amazing how these players grow from their yeah. first live event to their second live event. And here's another turnover, and Jared Goff might get put on skates here, and he just runs right by him. Touchdown, Drini. It's a pick six, and the route continues here in the wild card. And I think that was yeah. Eric Allen. Drini just 31 nothing. Oh, if it was house rules, you know, if, if, I was, if it was me and my brother sitting on the couch, you know, you'd be you'd be done. You'd be hitting the reset or going outside to cry. Well, hey, you know, it's being down 31 nothing, Trini. <laughs> Trini could do this to pretty much almost anyone. So. Well, you're down three possessions here. You're down 24. Yeah. You got to force something in. Yeah, you got one conventional. But when it's Eric Allen, 94 overall. Tons of zone coverage, tons of speed, and Jared Goff is a burnt toast. There's Doug Baldwin, and Dougie moves it to the 48-yard line. It's rough. 10 for 14, only one interception. You know, I met a lot of people in the league, Archie. Dougie Baldwin is probably one of my favorites. Good player. Of course, Aaron Donald beat him in a charity challenge of Madden. Good player, good Madden player, and uh, more importantly, great person. Yeah, very important. One of my, well, I'm telling you, one of my favorite things right now has been watching guys like Charles James, <laughs> former Texans cornerback, and A.J. Bouye. Uh, apparently, they like to climb the leaderboards. You know, they, they yeah. call themselves the mob, the big into Madden. A funny story about Charles James is he actually qualified for a Madden Classic can't play, play, yeah. on online elimination, and uh, he couldn't play. It's like, bro, you're in the NFL. NFL players aren't allowed to compete, and he was mad at us when we when we told him he couldn't play. I mean, that's how much he, he, he as much as a competitor as he is, and all around good dudes come to the studio wow. a few times. But it was, I thought that was funny, you know. He's like, man, I can hang with these guys. And yeah. He's a good player. So, Charles, no hard feelings. We'd love to have you out here. Can't well, do it when you're in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, it's it's public knowledge that he beat W. Of course, W beat him a few times after that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Handily. But he did one time beat W. And that's cool. You get to see these Madden players interacting with NFL players, getting them in their Twitch streams. Uh, Skimbo, you know, he talks to Eric Berry and uh, Jeremy Hill on, on the Bengals. Love seeing this kind of stuff. Under four minutes to go. Fourth and 18. For the youngster from Staten Island, New York. Looks like his journey is going to come to an end. And I can't stress it enough. It, it's, it's really no big deal. Spoto has so much potential. Throws a touchdown right there. It's just some of the potential. But long term, he has so much potential, Coltrane. He's only 16 years old. This is his first opportunity to make a live event. He called his shot, made the live event. And it doesn't look like competitive Madden's going anywhere anytime soon. He's going to have plenty more opportunities. He's going to have to take these experiences, learn from them, and just continue to grow to become a better player. You remember when we were in high school a long time ago, and you were a junior in high school. This guy's going to have 20 grand. Remember, we were bugging our parents for 20 bucks. Oh, my gosh. He's going to be swagging around. Probably makes getting a date to the prom a lot easier, huh? Locked in. He's pretty much locked in on that. And there goes Shady McCoy once again, who might break single game record for rushing. I think Drini's going to, you know, he's just going to work the clock, try to get out of here and focus on his next game, which will be versus Prodigy, who got a, a bye into the semifinals by going 3 and 0 in the group stage. And if if we look toward that matchup, Drini and Prodigy. Prodigy hadn't said a lot, but his game looked really good earlier in the week. Yeah, Prodigy, like you said, won the group. And when I was talking to the players, you know, we spent a lot of time with the players going into these events. 
people were worried about Prodigy. They're like, hey, I I've seen all these other guys play. I know exactly what all my opponents want to do. And Prodigy was kind of the mystery. Granted, they have some tape on him now, but when you've never played against the guy and, you know, you lose that comfort factor. We've hit the two minute warning here on third and five. It's 31 to seven. Drini has come out here and really displayed a dominant performance here in the wild card. Look at him pass it. High points it into the third row. Drini point differential doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> You know, you get down here though. There's maybe a you know a few plays that you collabing. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It kicks yeah. it through. You're right though. That is a good point, Coltrane. He, he's in a real game situation, and there's still more tournament left to play. Maybe he wanted to try a couple things. We know it gets stingy in the red yeah. zone, so free free opportunity to work on something right there. That's, that, that's a really good point, and you know you can't blame him for that. Time is limited here at the Madden Challenge. You only have so much time to prepare. And just like the NFL, Madden's, you know, if when you're playing on this level, you don't want to just pick up eight sacks to one. Jeez. Look at that stat. That's ridiculous with eight sacks. That's the most sacks we've seen. And like I said, he's kept it, kept that line on aggressive for the majority of the game. The, the, the point I'm try, trying to make, Coltrane, is when you're playing on this level, you don't want to just pick up and run any play. Just like in the NFL, you run what you practice. All these plays these guys are doing, they have practiced plenty of times, and they know how to execute them. They're not going out here trying to freestyle anything. So uh, that's one thing that separates these elite guys from the other players. If you and your buddy, you know, casual guys, they're just going to pick up and call plays. These guys run what they practice. So a third and three. Now for Spoto. Trying to fight. Down 34 to seven with 95 seconds to go in this one. We got Joel and Dubby coming up next. Long time awaited matchup between those two RGs. Yeah, oh my goodness, you want to talk about a match to see? I was excited last night when. Oh, you saw we both. Saw, our, we, saw, we saw the bracket. Yeah, both saw, our faces I, 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 were. We gave them the O face. I think everybody's face lit up. It's going to be an entertaining match. There's another sack. There's a rivalry there between those two. Bradley Roby with two sacks and an interception for a touchdown. Yeah, Trini is not scared. If, if I'm watching this game, one takeaway I have from Trini's number one ranked pass defense is he is not afraid to send the dogs. He will mix in the blitz. He will send five. He'll send six. And you need to be ready for that. The prodigy sitting back in the players lounge watching this one going. I, I know a few things. Number one. <laughs> I got to bottle up Shady McCoy. Oh my gosh. And number two, I'm going to fake snap as many, <laughs> at least once a play. And you don't want to do it twice because you'll, get a, no, you'll yeah. get a false start. But you at least got to go once. That's a really good pro type of thing. If you play Madden and you're online and you're getting spanked and you feel like they're getting pressure on you all the time, you need to incorporate that fake snap because they're most likely on that aggressive pass rush. Well, you, gotta, you, you always have to be watching that banner underneath the scoreboard. Because when those co coaching adjustments come into play, just like you see user playmaker there, that's when you can see, oh, that sack happened because of the aggressive rush. No, but that's only offline because those only show it right. for you when it worked for you. For you. That's so right. You, 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 don't get, you don't get the great free point. Key you don't get it back to you. That's a great point, Archie. Yeah. There's, there's a touchdown. touchdown for the youngster. Trying to put this more in a respectable range, but. I mean, I feel like Pat Sajak from the Will Fortune. You know, we we do have some parting gifts for you, 20 grand. Yeah, you right. already have the at-home version because that's what you played to get here. I think the thing that hurts Sporto the most is the season being over. Wanted to be an ultimate league. You have this skill set. You're a top Madden player in the world, and now it just feels like you're going to have to wait the next season to show that off. And that's a painful feeling. I, I've competed in Madden before and. When your season comes to an end, it, it, it's not a good feeling. You put a lot of hard work into this game, and you want you want to use that work, you know, as much as you can. But and I'm glad I got you here in the booth, RG, as the expert, because I'm I'm putting down some fake news <laughs> uh, on some of my some of my tips here. Twenty point win.
Verdrini, and you can see the look of relief on the face of the man from D.C., and he's going to move on to face Prodigy. We got Joel coming up next against Dubby, but what a dominating performance by Drini. And I love when the hype is real. All last year, you have all these Madden players, top Madden players, yeah. Mo. Problem. These guys are Joel and Drini are the real deal. They're gonna win. They're gonna make live events next year. And that could be the final. It, it that, could the be. The possibility is still there for those two to face in the De final. Definitely a possibility. But it's awesome to see these players live up to the hype, live up to the expectations. And Drini has done that and more. I'm super impressed with him. Well, Adrian standing by with the winner. Drini, congratulations on your win. And before, you had shared with me a YouTube video that talked about dreams, and you said that it reminded you of your losses of the past. So how are you thinking about that in connection with this win here? Well, there's a lot of losses that I have went through uh, in Madden. So one of them was in Vegas where I lost to Shift Guy Cole in the top four. If I won that game, I there was a possibility, you know, I made the first event. So that's always on my mind. And I think that loss right there made me a better Madden player. And as you can see, I'm going far in this tournament. And hopefully, you know, I get another W and make it to the finals. And you're moving on to the semifinals, the final four, and you will play Prodigy. What do you expect? Uh, Prodigy, uh, I know what book he has. Uh, I know what he's going to do. Hopefully my lab time, that my lab work that I did yesterday pays off. And hopefully my defense, you know, plays amazing like I did versus Spotto. And I see you have this very interesting headband here, kind of army style. Can you tell us about it? Uh, there's a, people actually know me by the bandana guy. So last yesterday I didn't have it on. I wasn't playing good, so I had to put it on today. I had to make sure that, you know, I was playing my best and putting on my bandana. Hey, here it goes. <laughs> Sounds like you have a superstition kind of going there. Yep, yep, exactly. Well, congratulations. Back to David, the guys.